I'm Mark. And I'm Teresa. Come hang out with us today. On my Fix It Up Life. Rebuilding Together believes that everyone deserves to live in a safe and healthy home. For nearly 25 years, Rebuilding Together has provided critical home repairs for low-income homeowners in need. With support from volunteers and skilled professionals, Rebuilding Together affiliates complete 10,000 rebuild projects every year, working to revitalize and stabilize vulnerable neighborhoods and communities across the country. Join Rebuilding Together and rebuild in your community. Find out how you can make a difference and get involved at rebuildingtogether.org. Mark? And this is my Fix It Up Life. Mark? Oh, I'm being beckoned. I want to say that I'm very excited that you did the water bucket challenge for ALS. So am I. And we posted it up on our Instagram account and tweeted it out. And I really did like what Anthony Acrino said about saving water. Yes, that was really good from the cousins on HGTV. But I still have my thinking cap on about that. I'm not quite sure yes. how we can then take all of the water from the water bucket challenge and be able to then I help think people. I think if you're in a drought area, yeah. you should say, you know what? I'll do the whole routine, then I'm going to donate some money maybe, some, to a place that needs actual water. But maybe it could be like the dirt bucket challenge or something. <laughs> I know that our guest, Kevin O'Connor, from crazy. this old house has around 400 thoughts just from dirt bucket on. Dirt bucket! How are you, Kevin? <laughs> I'm great, guys. How about... You take the bucket, you dump it over your head when you're standing on your lawn so that it gets... Wait, your lawn is dirt. It's probably <laughs> already dirt. <laughs> no, never mind. The dirt bucket challenge would be better for your yard, Mark. <laughs> I could just dig up the, <sighs> the filth that's there, right. filth yes. and filth, pour uh -huh. it over my head, back into the hole I dug it out from. And no one would even notice it happen because that's kind of what he wears every day, right? Pick out the grubs. Make sure you get your grubs out. <laughs> what, what, Mr. Oh, O'Connor? You know what? I think Pigpen, remember him from Charlie yeah. Brown? I think he was the original Dirt bu Bucket Challenge guy. I think he did that every day. He forgot about the water and he just did the dirt. Dirt Bucket Challenge. Yes. What uh, Mr. O'Connor from This Old House is referring to, and I will now, because this has turned legal, is this game only of lawns? Re refer to him as Mr. O'Connor henceforth. Yes. Is referring to the probably now trending hashtag Game of Lawns. Game, Game of Lawns. Lawns. Where it's we not. go back and forth with certain lawn competition items. Yes. He calls it edging. I refer to it as lawn sharpening, yes. for example. With dollar bills. <laughs> I, have I, a, I have a gift I have a gift for you, Mark. Um, as you know, we work with some great experts, Roger Cook being one of the finest, our landscaper, and I consulted with him. We went all the way back through the ag community, and we actually came up with something for your lawn, knowing what a pro you are. <laughs> this is a very, this is a very special species. Species. This is um, Clementis crabgrassium, and it is a, it's a very hardy crabgrass because I know how you love crabgrass. You have mostly crabgrass in your yard. So this is a special breed just for you to make sure that it stays there all year long. Does it grow in December? It, it, year long. It's amazing. <laughs> the hybrid. It's a hybrid. Clementis <laughs> crabgrassium just for you. It'll go with everything. It'll go with the crabgrass already in your yard. <laughs> for those of you who want to get in on this, you yes. can join us on Twitter yes. under that hashtag. Game of and, Lawns. And one, see the bold facery of Mr. O'Connor's lies. Two, it's all in Latin, so you have to have attended some type of school that teaches Latin. Correct. Right. Quid, yes. quid, quid pro uh, or a with the Benedictines. But anyway, I digress. What? Uh, okay. Yo digressio. Kevin um, O'Connor, you shared some photos with us. I did. Treehouse. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Yes, consider this a so rare I and genuine know. compliment. That thing looks fantastic. Okay. So you have a whole collection of children in your O'Connor, what would I call it? Crew. Family I, album. I'd call it a jail. 
Brood. We call it a brood. Your brew. A now, brood. is there like some kids that are allowed into the treehouse and some that aren't on particular days? Do they make up signs? No, the kids actually have complete full run of the treehouse. In fact, I, I've almost been um, told that I need to stay away from the treehouse area because it's not just a treehouse. It's an entire complex down there in the woods that contains uh, the treehouse, the climbing wall, the zip line, the death tower, and the mosquito tick farm that we're running as well. You know, a mosquito tick farm is something that I think everyone should really sort of invest in. Yeah. You have to. It's actually kind of serious. You should check your kids for ticks when they you come should. in. You should, yeah. You know, if you it live near important. the woods or like Kevin outside. Well, you know what? I have to say is that my husband, Mark, built a bee house because he was reading about the decline in bees, mm. but he built it like three days after our son was stung by his first bee. So our five-year-old was like, why do we want bees to come here, Daddy? Because he's just like pouring salt on the wounds. Daddy? Daddy? Well, to be fair, he got stung at school, so it doesn't exist. <laughs> it's not like I saw it. We need our bees, and we need our bats. We need a lot of bats here in this, this place of the uh, part of the world. Is that right? You're, it's a bat right. thing where you guys are? It's like one of those things that people don't know about, but if you don't have bats and bees, it's kind of where our food comes from. Kind of. I mean, Just... I eat cows, but... <laughs> what do the cows eat? <laughs> <laughs> no, I hear you. We need more bats and bees, so um, the bats and bees are welcome in our yard. Okay. Oh, that's really good. Now, you built that treehouse. Did any of the children help you? Yes, absolutely. In fact, the purpose behind building it was so that they would help me. So it took um, longer than my projects usually take, which is usually long, uh, which the boys on the show will attest to. But it was I, I pretty much made sure that I was never out there working on it if one of them or all of them weren't with me because... You know, building it's half the fun. Falling off of it's twice the fun, but building it is half the fun. Did you? Well, I have to say though, you know, because Chris Chris Stout Hazard tweeted us mm -hmm. and said that a DIY host that doesn't build anything for themselves are like celeb chefs that only eat takeout, which I think is pretty smart. So, props to you for going out there and building stuff and being, a, you know, a real guy with a real hammer. Every once in a while. What kind of hammer do you use? What's your favorite? Um, I have a stiletto, straight back. It's a 12 ouncer and a 10 ouncer. I carry both. At when the same around, time. When I'm around Tom Silva, I take out the 12 ouncer just to make sure that my masculinity level is on par with the with uh, the, the master. Yeah. Uh, and then you know, there's sometimes when the 10 ouncer inside for doing stuff. But for like tr little trim things and that kind of. Yeah, the, the 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 twelve is big. I mean, as you got the, as you know, the, the head on that thing's like an yeah. inch and a half across. Yeah. So you don't always you don't always need it. Well, that's but, a good thing. But you know, uh, I just read that what this old house is celebrating thirty five years, which is incredible. Go now that's right? good by TV standards, right? I only read books, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> Neither would we. Um, <laughs> Yeah, 35 years is awesome. I mean, I think in anything, whether it's a marriage or relationship, but certainly on TV, when most of these things are designed to go three years, maybe seven, um, we're always given a list of all the shows that came and went um, in three seasons, and you're shocked. You're like, wow, the Brady Bunch only ran for five seasons? Start, you know, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, it's 1979. Sure. We're thrilled. Um, but I think, I think part of the celebration for us is not the length, but the fact uh, is the consistency. The fact that we're still sort of doing what we're doing, which is really authentic renovation, a deep dive, and remarkably, um, Norm and Richard were there that very first year in 1979. So they've been at it for 35 years with us, and Tommy and Roger both at about 25 years plus. So uh, the crew is still doing what they do, and we're proud of that. That's so fantastic. no matter how long you guys go, you'll still be the rookie. Always the new guy. I cannot. I've been trying to off these guys, and they just won't go. No, I know it. I, it's you, you should. You're like nudging them to the edge of the scaffold, kind of thing. Hey, look what's they, over they, there. They are more durable and resistant than the crabgrass in your yard, Mark. Oh, that's, that's like such lovely. a nice compliment. 
compliment. Yes, it's true. Oh. And I do, as you're as proud of 35 years, I respect those guys and <clears throat> you um, a lot. And of all the people that we've interviewed and all the people that we've met on my Fix It Up Life, oh, hang I on. have managed to insult Tom. Yes. Meant, meant to mention something about one thing. It came off like I was calling him fat. <laughs> it's true. I, I insulted Norm. How? Uh, at, when at the National Hardware Show, we saw him, and we were climbing up onto the stage where we were. I said, hey, you know, there's a step over there. Rest of the sentences that I used. He looks at me and says, I'm not that old. Oh, he called him old. Okay. R Roger, thanks to you, I set him up for a question he couldn't answer. Oh. Now, meanwhile, you turn out to be bulletproof. All I've got for you no, no, are no. insults, and it's just you're you're the Teflon Don of home improvement. No, no, I no, no. I haven't listened to a word you said, Mark, since I don't know, whenever we met. How many years ago? <laughs> but do you remember <laughs> the the cheerleading organization that voted Kevin to be what the the number one guy next door or something like that? Yeah. I have to look that up again, but. Who would want to? I that's, don't know. That's icky. The ultimate guy next door, like the girl next door. We are, but our real topic is what DIY hosts actually build in their own houses, in their own homes. And we got to talk, we got to mention the treehouse, which yes. is, it's all like live edge. Like you yeah. cut like branches or small logs or something for the railing. There's a, or, there's a, there's a ton of them out there in the woods. So we just, uh, we, we picked most of them up. But there yeah. was some stuff that came down. So, yeah, everything's just, you know, it's either rough sawn lumber for the planks, the joists and stuff. And then everything else is just the trees, you know, just wow. cut down and put up and all that. It's cool. Wow. Yeah. Now, you also have a hack for that's, that's modern talk, by the way. Okay. You might want to Google that. Um, at when, when we're done the hang, <laughs> yeah. um, for, how do you spell that? For is your, it H A Q U E? It's, it's H A Y um, C K U E. Oh. Um, with an accent over the Y. Nice. Um, nice. Uh -huh. For your fire pit, which I think is a great idea. Yeah. So, have you guys got a little fire pit in the backyard? A little portable thing that you We've put had on the grass. We did, and then we took the, the wood stove out of our house and made it into our fireplace. Oh. Okay, so a lot of people have the portable fire, but I've got one on the patio, and you have the fire in it. It's the bowl. It's the copper bowl, you know, on the stand. You have the fire in it. You, you stumble into the house, and you go to bed. It rains overnight, and you've got this big soup of ash and soot floating on top of six inches of water. And I'm thinking Classy. to myself, right? Yeah, Classy. right? I don't, I don't yeah. need this. Um, and even if it hasn't rained, it's sitting there and it's kind of useless all the times you're not using it. It's just sucking it up. So I'm thinking to myself, I need to put a cover on this that'll keep the rainwater out and make it useful when I'm not having a fire into a coffee table. So um, I just whipped together some Ipe flooring, cut a circle, put it on there. But here's the amazing thing. I, I put a picture or two up on social media thing. You guys should check into it. I think it's going to stick around. And Good tip. A hundred plus thousand people on my measly little Facebook page. A hundred plus thousand people saw it, and exponentially more on this old house. It was, everyone was just like, "Ah, oh, that's a great idea. I need one of those. everyone wanted one of these things." So, just last week, the people spoke, and we went into the shop, and Tommy and I built one for a, an episode of Ask This Old House, um, which is coming up in October, and and of course. He made his a lot better and bigger than mine because that's what he does. But we're going to show everyone how they can make their own cheap and easily. Get a fine little piece right there. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. So how did he improve upon your original 100,000 plus approved design? Uh, so I used three quarter inch boards, um, flooring. So they were three and a half inches wide, three quarter thick. He went for five quarter decking. So beefier sort of all around. A um, couple other little tweaks, but the best thing he did is I cut mine with a jigsaw. I drew the circle and did the jigsaw and then had to sand it down and clean it up. He made this beautiful little sled, you know, where he had the radius and he just tracked his router around to make this sweet, perfect circle fine cut, among other things. But that was, you know, that was the big uptick. Very clever uh, guy. That of, course of course yeah. he did. Of course he did. Does he even own a jigsaw or... 
I get at his stage there might be tools that you just don't need anymore because you're that good. You know, the day after we built it, he yapped in my ear for three days with all these other ideas. He goes, you know, I could have made a sled and a jig where I took the circuit I saw and I cut <laughs> underneath and about about. All right, and I'm just like, okay, I get it. But actually, <laughs> here was a design thing that we came up with. Mine was flat on both sides with cleats underneath, and you'll understand yes. this. When it rained, the water came down the side underneath the bottom and traveled three inches uh, you're kidding. into surface tension, right? The same yeah. thing on the bottom of the windowsill. I didn't have any relief kerf underneath. So that was an improvement that we made after it was field tested in Kevin's backyard. So Tommy also came up with a great little way to put a nice little um, dado with his sled and his router as well. He routed that into, he changed the... Yeah. The... Uh, Radius. Diameter, I guess. Yeah, diameter. Radius. Uh, radius, I'm sorry. Half the circle. And he changed that, made it smaller, and cut with a little bit on a trammel. Ha! Huh! What? Wow. Yeah. No, he, he, uses, he uses his router. He just dropped his bits down. And, yeah, absolutely. So wow. anyway, you'll see that on Ask. People can look at that one and uh, make it for themselves. Piece so, okay. well, no wonder you bring out the big hammer when you're around him. Hmm. I would walk around if if I were working You'd with like Tommy. You'd like wear a breastplate or you something. You kidding me? Or, I, I would. You get, know, like one of those Roman I would Trojan get, hat thing, like I, the helmet. With I the, would get rid of my tool pouch entirely, and I would chain fifty-five gallon drums to each hip, fill them with nails, and carry at least four sledgehammers and a commander mall. I, you couldn't touch me. It's a little difficult to imagine you trying to overcompensate, Mark, but give me a second. You know, we can pause our Google Hangout where we're talking with Kevin O'Connor about what, what DIY <laughs> TV hosts build in their own home. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness gracious. 55-gallon drums, baby. Full uh -huh. of iron. Tommy, what? I rode my Harley here like this. So what? So, so, Kevin, how often in your life are you approached by people that you know and don't know that say, can you ask, I don't know, Tom, this question for me? Does that happen every day? Uh, I, I try not to go out every day. Okay. That's a good thing. That shows. Um, no, it, it, happens, it, it happens a lot. Yeah. The, I, the, two, the two or three things that I get all the time are um, thank you which is amazing. People are like, wow, thank you so much for all those years of inspiration, those great ideas and all that. Um, say hi to the guys, you know, tell Norm and Tom, you know, say, say hi to the guys. And then the questions, you know, like, yeah. could you, like I got a wet basement, blah, blah, blah. I got my gutter, you know, the questions. But that's, that's pretty cool. We're fine with that. That's good. The fact that people are appreciative, um, that they've connected and feel like they know these guys and want to be like, hey, tell them I said hi, that's awesome. And the fact that they look to these guys as sort of experts and would just love to pull their ear for a minute or two, that's, that's okay with us, too. That's, that's what we do. That's what we, for 35 years, that's what these guys have been doing. That's well, awesome. I was really excited to see when they started signing up for, for Twitter, too. Yeah. I was surprised and delighted. And I imagine that they get a lot of, a lot of questions. So we have one guy who's not on Twitter. Norm. Norm. I know. Gotta, I follow fun. all. We follow he, all you guys. He he transcends Twitter. What are you guys gonna get me if I get him on Twitter? Oh wow! Ooh. Steak dinner. Tell you what. Ooh, that's a good beer. Question. Steak dinner. Beer. A copy of The Carpenter's Notebook by Mark Clement. It's a really good book. I know the author. I and have one. I have. This one. looks like a gang sign, and. <laughs> We will give you the pieces and parts to the official My Fix It Up Life compost bin That's for your own good. home. All right. What? Yeah. Pieces and parts to our compost bin. Well, not ours. Where are we we'll... going to put all our compost? Actually, I need a new compost bin. So, uh, you know what? You win my old compost bin. You win what's inside shells. of our compost bin. <laughs> <laughs> I just put a watermelon in there the other day. It's delicious. Yeah, exactly. all right, we'll work on it. We'll, we'll try to get Norm on there. We'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. I do have to say, though, that we have a watermelon growing out of our compost bin. So it's a very special compost bin. It, it, hasn't, it, it hasn't been taken over by the crabgrass yet? No. It actually is, is a watermelon vine that's growing out of 
the compost bin. No kidding, it's like 20 feet long. Around our grill, and then there's like a watermelon growing, and it's probably like 8 inches, 10 inches in diameter yeah. now. Which like, I plan to throw at your house on Halloween. So you get our very special compost watermelon to enjoy oh. inside of your treehouse. See how well, I bring it all together? We'll, we'll know you're coming to the house, Mark, when we hear the 55-gallon 55 55 drums of nails clanking down the street. Um, so my, my are Harley you with the feeding sidecar. the watermelon when you put compost, more compost every day? Is it like, is it like a feeding the watermelon? Like I think so. Feeding alien? It's like that thing? movie, you remember? What, what was that movie with the plant that came alive? It was a Broadway show. World Shop of Horrors? Yes. Hmm. I'm not a Broadway no? guy. No? You're not a Broadway guy? See, that's what you guys have never done, is uh, like a musical version of this old house. 35 years of the program, a lot of shows have done a musical version of, you know, you know, How I Met Your Mother did a musical version of their show. You know what this is? I think it would be kind of quite charming. Clearly, this is a pen. Everyone dresses up, like, yeah. from, from the neck to the tool belt sure. in, like, This a, is meant to symbolize a shark. And this would be this old house jumping over it if you go into a number. musical. Okay. I want it on the air. Okay. I, I Sorry. want people to watch it. Watch I, what? This old house and ask this old they house. They will. There's a very special this old house coming up this fall, too. What you want to talk about? We only have a couple minutes left. To talk I'll, give about. You the sh I'll give you the short version. Okay. Which is, Thank uh, God. <laughs> 35th anniversary on this old house going to celebrate it um, which someone in the crew has deemed the all American season first project 1850's row house in Boston's oldest neighborhood Charlestown USS Constitution Bunker Hill Monument on top of Breeds Hill second project in Lexington Massachusetts cradle of the revolution some of the first shots fired back in 76 that being 1776, um, a, the youngest project we've ever done, although a colonial revival house. And then something that's different for us, a third project up in New Hampshire uh, for a gentleman who is Staff Sergeant Matt DeWitt, an Iraqi war veteran. And we are partnering with Homes for Our Troops, a great organization out of Massachusetts. Um, Sergeant DeWitt uh, lost both of his arms uh, when his armored vehicle was hit by RPGs, amputations from the elbows down, and thanks to Homes for Our Troops, he, his wife, uh, and his kids are getting a brand new house set up so that he can live comfortably there in appreciation for his service. So it's a, it's a big season for us. 35 years is definitely worth celebrating, and we're going to do it with those three projects starting in October. That's beautiful. Starting in October, that everybody really needs to tune in. Yeah, that is, it, it's doing well and doing good. You know, hats off to you and to Staff Sergeant that, you know, I'm a big consumer of the freedom that he sacrificed to provide. Yes, we consume it every day, all day long. Yes, mm -hmm. and we're free to write and goof off and grow crabgrass and poison your trees as we see fit. <laughs> Mike A. has chimed in, and he wants, of course, this old house to do some projects at his house. Oh, I think so that probably happens. How should he apply? All the time. Well, it's a good thing he chimed in because we were just running out of old houses that needed to be fixed up. <laughs> we had almost gotten to the bottom of that barrel, but uh, no. But um, the volume you guys do, you might have. No, no, no. Uh, thisoldhouse.com. That's you submit it there for either ask this old house or this old house. That's where we get just about all of our projects. Just regular folks emailing us, um, posting up there. Uh, that's where we get the ideas. That's where we get the homeowners. So we get a lot of them, Mike A. But you're certainly uh, we would welcome you to throw your hat into the ring, and we might that's come out. That's awesome. Is that on the internet? Thisoldhouse.com. Is that? It's on. It's on one of the internets. Oh, oh. right. Okay. Well, that's, oh. that's where you will also find what? a video of this interview. Yes, with Kevin, who actually, that's how Kevin was found, too, through Ask This Old House. True. A true story, true that. Look it up on the Internet. It's one of them. It might be the other one, not the one where thisoldhouse.com is on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's on the one that Mark looks at. 35 years, Kevin O'Connor, This Old House. 
ask this old house. Yes, we got to go. We have to roll it. Thank you for joining us. Could you say hi to the guys? I will say and hi to the thank you. You're welcome. And we have this problem with this watermelon. Too big. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Always great being with you. And stop posting fake photos of your lawn. <laughs> Hashtag game of lawns. <laughs> Crabgracius Clemenus. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, O'Connor. Kevin. See you, guys. Just looking for a place to go. Somewhere I could just lay low. Brave storm and wait.